Alright, since last time I took the video, I went ahead and installed the shelves that you see there, as well as the E chain. Well, kind of getting it a little bit closer so you can see how I did that connection. Pretty much similar to what I talked about before with the angle bracketry, and everything's getting run through the grommet that I cut into the side. The other side is pretty much exactly the same thing. I'll walk over there real quick so you can see. got another shelf and um, I'm just working on the cable management now and also getting the uh, limit switch components put in place. I revamped the process in which I'm going to do this. I went ahead and just designed some of these, uh, fabricated a couple parts in order to install the limit switches on them. Um, this is going to be for the z-axis, this one here is for the y-axis and this is for the x-axis and uh, each one is uh, custom cut to fit into a certain groove or whatever and I'm going to apply the limit switches to these parts once they're installed on the machine. I also went ahead and upgraded my limit switches before I was going to use these smaller switches of uh, unknown origin and I decided to go get some Japanese made Omron switches. Not terribly expensive, a couple bucks, got about 12 of them for future projects. And the way those are going to be attaching to the machine is just using these metal screws here which are size 4, 3 quarters of an inch long. So I'll go ahead and start putting these parts on and show you how it all fits together. Before I get this wired up I just wanted to show you the three locations that I attach these uh, limit switches. Up here on the z-axis you can see it mounts into this groove here with a bolt which can be tightened and loosened and allow you to slide it up to dial it in. Um, the contact point is going to be right here in the linear carriage and I've used a linear carriage for all the contact points right here, same exact thing on the y-axis linear carriage contact point and then down here on the X at the very end of the machine I got the limit switch right there which is going to run into the linear carriage there so that's how that setup works and I plan on running the wiring through uh, as much cable management that I've installed as possible to keep everything out of the way. This is just a quick video tutorial so you get an idea of how I ran this line here. But um, I'm running what I can through all my cable track. This coming off the limit switch I just showed you runs all the way down here and actually does a loop at the end and comes back and feeds out the side of this. This is all going to be glued in you can see I cut a notch in there originally and the cable is going to lay nice and tight down in there and won't interfere with this track and then this comes around and loops up into this terminal block and this is where I got all my other connections going so I can wire it in series to the next limit switch and as it's flowing through one line it comes back and flows through the other line and everything just runs in series this one's going down running through the E chain all the way around the loop and it terminates in another terminal block and then this last line here runs underneath the shelf that I created I just drilled some holes and I still gotta attach this line you know tight but right now I'm just working with it feeds out the back side and runs into the last limit switch right there now I'm gonna have to end up running this wire a little bit over here and tucking it away because this E chain is actually going to extend out past the end of the machine when it's on its full swing back but that's how I'm running all this stuff and then from here this is the main line that runs down into the gecko so that's pretty much it and I'll go into it a little bit more later if needed to but uh this was one of those things that's kind of confusing until you do it even running it on paper it didn't make sense until I did it thanks